Hello there. I just realized I forgot my drink and I've been talking for an hour on the phone and now I'm thirsty. Well, anyway, I'm sitting in my tiny house and I want to share today. I just got done ministering to a lady, a friend of mine on the hosts of heaven and on the courts of heaven. And today I want to go over four steps or four things that you can do that have to do with sending the host of heaven and going to the courts of heaven and getting answers to your prayer. And these are um, really cool things, especially if you've ever gone to the courts of heaven and when you go there, you, you can't figure out what to repent of. You can't figure out what to do or you're not getting answers or you don't know how to send out your host of heaven, the host of heaven to get answers to your prayers. Uh, so that's kind of what I want to go over today. Now, when we go to the courts of heaven, a lot of us um, in deliverance ministry and uh, in the courts of heaven who know about certain prayers that you say to repent, or you can go to them and you can get lists of prayers to repent. Like if uh, uh, if you were an if you're an Indian, a Native American, there are prayers that you can say that your ancestors did blood covenants with and uh, contracts with other gods and a history that they have a prayer that you can say of repentance so that when you get to the courts of heaven that Satan doesn't have anything legally against you that he can cause your prayers not to be answered. Well, there's only so many prayers that you can pray and then when you go to the courts of heaven, you think, okay, why do I still have this problem? I repented, I said every prayer that I could think of to say, but I still am not getting answers. I still have this problem. Now what do I do? And that's what I want to talk to you about today. And this these four steps on how to pray and how to get an answer came out today as, as I was ministering to one of my Facebook friends. And I wanted to share it with you because it's really good information. And I hope that you get something from it and can share it with your friends. Okay, so first of all, when you pray every prayer that you know to pray and you repented of everything you needed to repent of, you repented of all of your ancestral iniquities and generational curses, but you're still not having an answer to a specific prayer. This is what you need to do. And this is really cool. First of all, let me take an example. Say, for example, um, your kid is into drugs. Okay, so you, you bound the spirit, you loosened things, you prayed, and you did all this stuff, but your kid is still into drugs. So the first thing you have to realize is it is a spiritual battle. You're not battling your kid trying to convince them that he doesn't have, he shouldn't be on drugs and here's the scripture that proves it and this, this, and this because that is the flesh and it's going to get in the way because perhaps that's not what that kid needs to hear. Perhaps that kid needs to hear about how much God loves them, how valuable they are and how special they are and how they have a future. So what I want to show you is we need to go to the root of the problem and a lot of us go to the surface problem mm -hmm. and the example I'm using is your, your kids on drugs. Okay, so the surface problem is your kids on drugs and then because they're on drugs, you have all these other issues. So you basically have a tree with a lot of fruit on it. And what you do is you wear yourself out trying to chop down this tree and get rid of all this fruit. But yet you have the roots there. So the problems manifest in a different way. So what the courts of heaven does is it gets to the root of the problem. And when you've prayed every prayer, when you confessed everything and you still don't have no answers, you got to remember it's a spiritual battle. You want to get to the root of the problem. You want to get to the strong man. You want to get to the cause of it. So here's some things that God told me to do that. Okay. So the problem is your kid's on drugs. And the root of that is he's um, perhaps uh, being promiscuous or into gay lifestyle or into um, uh, getting a girl pregnant or... Um, getting sick or losing all his money and gambling, whatever. So we're just going to use that one sample. Okay, so the problem is, as a sample, your kid's into drugs. Okay, what do you do? Okay, this is what God showed me. Number one thing you do is, what emotions are you feeling right now? You should write those emotions down. Because emotions are triggers. Emotions are open doors. Negative emotions are open doors to your mind. Negative emotions are open doors to the spirit realm. Okay. So write down what emotions are you feeling from this specific problem? Uh, okay. So you might be feeling, okay, I feel betrayed. 
I feel as though my kid doesn't care about me. I feel as though I'm afraid my kid's going to die and overdose on a drug. I'm afraid he's going to get a girl pregnant. Um, um, he could. So all these emotions that you're feeling, write those emotions down. So those are open doorways. Those are things you need to repent of. Remember, we were talking about repenting in the court of, of law in heavenly courts. You, you have nothing more to repent of, but you still have the problem. Okay, so look at the problem and think of all the emotions that you're experiencing. Okay. My son's betraying me. He's on drugs. Um, uh, this could happen. This could happen. This could, he's in the wrong company. He keeps going in the same cycle. Okay. Now, think of your son. What are the emotions that he might be feeling? Put yourself in your son's place. Your son's on drugs. Okay. Think. Why is your son on drugs? Is your, what emotions is your son feeling that causes him to be on drugs? Is he feeling like, okay, I'm betrayed. My, my parents don't give me any money. Whether they're wrong or right. Put yourself in his place. What's he thinking? My parents, this kid on drugs, my parents might not be giving me money. I'm not lovable. I'm not loved. I'm worthless. Um, I'll always be like this. I'm hopeless. I have no answers. I can't get out. I have no skills. So you take the emotions that you feel you would have in that spot or the, you listen, first of all, to your son who's on drug, who is the problem we're trying to use as an example. Okay, so you listen to what your son is saying and you take his cues and you repent for him and for you. So those are more that you things that you can repent of. So because emotions are open doors for the enemy. Negative emotions are open doors for the enemies to mess with your mind and to mess with your body and you, everything. So so number one is you listen to the situation. You use your ears and you listen. Then you dig out all the emotions that you're experiencing from it, all the emotions the other person is experiencing from it, and you shut those doors by repenting of it. Father, I repent of making my son think that he's hopeless or unloved and then you go through the list i repent for my son and myself that he feels unvalued and, and hopeless and 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 um that he's not skilled or unloved so you repent for the emotions you're feeling now we're not talking about right or wrong we're just talking about open doors and then you repent for the same thing that you think that person is feeling okay so number one listen Number two, think of all the emotions you're experiencing, all the emotions they're experiencing, and repent for it. Okay, well, that was number one, and then number two, and number three is then you begin to decree. Now, you don't decree, my son is not on drugs. You decree, my son is free from drugs. And then you begin to decree his destiny. Father, I thank you that my son is free from drugs. I thank you that he is skilled and he has a job or, or, or his own business where he's just growing and maturing and falling in love with you. He's fulfilling his destiny and he's doing everything you call him to do. He's walking in the fullness of Christ. Now you begin to decree the opposite of those emotions, the opposite of what you're hearing them say, the opposite of the fruit that you're seeing on the tree. Because remember, you want to get to the root. You don't, you don't, you cut the tree down, the fruit will manifest in a different way. So you need to dig out the roots. And by working with your emotions, that other person's emotions and everything going around it, it gives you something to repent of, gives you something to grab a hold of and something to, um, uh, something to work with. Because sometimes when you go to the courts of heaven over and over, you can't think of anything more you need to repent of. In order to get the situation answered. So God showed me that if you deal with your emotions. And the other person's emotions. And all they're feeling. Then that that will close the door on the enemy. Okay then after. So you, you listen to what they're saying. You listen to your heart. What you're experiencing. You deal with those emotions. You repent of those emotions for yourself and for them. You decree what the word says. And the last thing is. You send the host. Send out the host. Okay, Father, I send out their host. Your word says that my whole household will be saved. So I claim that for my son. I send the host of heaven out to my son. In Jesus' name, everything I do will prosper. I birth this kid, and this kid is my kid, and this kid will prosper. Everything he does, he will prosper. He will be successful. Uh, you have called him into whatever. And so you begin to decree Everything that is the opposite of what you're actually here, what you're actually experiencing and seeing the fruit, you call and speak and send out the angels to go and do uh, the 
uh, angels hearken to the voice of the word. You give voice to the word by speaking the word and decreeing and declaring it in that situation. And remember, everything has frequency. In, in the beginning, God said, let's make man in our image. And he said, in the beginning, God created, God said, words have vibrations. They have frequencies. They stay in your walls. They're always in the atmosphere. They never can be taken back. Once you say a word, you can make it null and void of power. But it's always out there. It's a vibration. It's a frequency. So our words of our mouth is life and death. So quit complaining and griping about the situation. Instead, change the frequency of your mouth. Change the power of your mouth. Speak the words that God said. Give voice to the angels. Give voice to the word so the angels can hearken to the word and decree it. And remember, don't speak the problem. Speak the answer. And when you're going to the courts of heaven, I just lay on my bed and I think of, okay, this prayer is not answered. I think, what emotion am I feeling about this? What, where is this problem stemming from? And if I'm not hearing any answer, what the root of the problem is, because sometimes the root has nothing to do with the fruit. The fruit's way out here and the root's over here. And it doesn't look like it, it's related at all. Uh, but so if I'm not hearing any answers, at least I can do something. I can think of, okay, what emotions am I feeling? What emotions surround this? Then I can get to the root of what the real spirit is behind it, what the strong man is behind it, and how to repent of that when I go to the courts of heaven. So I lay on my bed and I just repent of everything I can think of, repent of, of, of the negative emotions and so on. And that, uh, going to the courts of heaven is like peeling, peeling off layers of onions. Sometimes you get immediate answers. You almost always get like immediate relief, but you don't always get immediate answers. You, you're peeling off layers and layers and layers because you got to remember you're not just dealing with your sin, but remember this, please remember this. As far as God's concerned, you are holy, blameless, and without reproach, okay? God does not see you any different. He doesn't love you any less. He doesn't talk to you any less. You might not hear him because of your sin, but Satan is the one. That's why God doesn't want you to sin because Satan gets a foothold on you. He, he builds a case against you. And uh, the book that I'm releasing um, between now and June 1st, probably in the next couple of days or a week, I'll be releasing it. It's almost ready. Um, it's on seeing the angels in the, have, in the sky, uh, working the courts of heaven. And um, that will talk about the courts and, and, and kind of be like a big introduction to it. But the book that I'm working on next is going to combine the kingdom of God and the courts of heaven and how you work it and apply it today. Anyway, I got off on a side tangent there. Sorry about that. Um, so you do those things and um, you um, will begin to experience breakthrough in your, in, in your prayer life because we're not, just put, we're not put on this earth just to get saved and that's it. We are put on this earth to have dominion and authority, to take everything that the devil messed up when he took our place of a dominion and authority and to put us back in our dominion and authority, decree and declare, bring judgment on the devil and on the spirits, uh, not the people, the spirits behind the people, bring that judgment and enforce the kingdom of God, expand the kingdom of God. It is all a legal system, okay? And it's so exciting when you begin to work in the courts of heaven. Um, and then in this new book, the in this new book, I will have some... Um, some other people that you can go to, like Terry Spencer, Eon Clayton, uh, Eon Clayton. Uh, there's a whole bunch more uh, people that teach on the courts of heaven from the throne of grace uh, to the courts of heaven. Just different people that teach on it that you can get more insight. I'm just a beginner on this. I'm just giving to you the revelation that God gives to me. Two reasons. Selfish number one is whenever I release revelation that he's given to me, he fills me up with more. That's why I write. I have almost four dozen books I've written so far. Because the more I release the revelation and the things I'm walking into you, the more I get filled up with. And I love heaven. It's so much better than TV. I hate TV. Anyway, so check out my website, robinbremer.net. If you are an author, Christian author, you want to publish your book, I'm also a publishing coach for $300. I publish your book. Get it out there. Print a book in your hand in 30 days. But I don't. it's not an advertisement. Anyway. Share this if you got some valuable information on how to war, work the courts of heaven, how to send out the hosts of heaven. Check out my Facebook page. Um, I just recently got um, a $5 um, George, whatever it is, uh, grill that I sent the angels out to get me. Exactly what I wanted. It's awesome. I love it. It's so much fun.
walking in the supernatural. Okay, so that's it. I love it. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. And look for my newest book. It's uh, one of about four dozen books I've written so far. But this is the new one. It's called Seeing Angels in the Sky, Working the Kingdom of Heaven. And the reason it's pictures of the hosts in heaven, God said, keep doing this. Because when you see the pictures of the hosts in heaven, you'll begin to look to the skies. You'll begin to look for supernatural manifestation of the hosts in heaven and hosts in your, in your house. You'll begin to walk in the supernatural. It builds up your faith. And then right there you have tools in the in the written part of the book on how to send out the hosts and, and how to work the kingdom of heaven. So Robin Bremer, talk to you later. I'll answer your questions. You might want to mention me in there if you have a question because it gets really crazy after a thousand views and answering questions and stuff. Um, okay, love you all. Talk to you later. Have a blessed day. Oops. <laughs>